Fallout 4 publisher Bethesda recently announced it will support mods for Fallout 4 on Xbox One, with mod support for PS4 potentially to follow. Homebrewed game modifications such as these are how skilled gamers can tinker with their favourite games, more typically on the PC. Mods range from the ingenious to the NSFW to the downright bizarre. Take a bow, the Skyrim mod that turns all dragons into macho man Randy Savage. Yeah! Sometimes a mod idea is so great that it goes on to inspire a built-in feature in a future game or an entire game of its own. Consider these seven genius ideas that started life as mods. Bethesda clearly knows the value of a good mod. Freeform base building is one of Fallout 4's various killer features, and it takes its cues from a mod for Fallout 3 called Real Time Settler and a mod for Fallout New Vegas called Wasteland Defense. These mods let you build fortifications, hire guards, and set up turrets and traps to defend your homestead from invading bands of raiders, giant scorpions, and other wasteland baddies who really want your rickety pile of old wood and scrap metal for some reason. It proved so popular that this is exactly what you'll be able to do in Fallout 4, scrapping materials from the world to get resources, then using those resources to build a home for yourself and your dog, complete with furniture, electricity, and complex pixel art light displays. It's important to get the essentials sorted first. One of the great joys of Just Cause is tethering something to something else to see what happens. Like tethering this guy to the ceiling, or tethering this vehicle to this exploding barrel. It explodes! Gotcha. But wouldn't it be more fun if you could tether lots of different things together at once? Yes, thought the Just Cause 2 modding community, which is how the Bolo patch was born. The Bolo patch is a mod that, among other things, lets you have multiple tethers deployed at once. Just Cause developer Avalanche clearly took notice, as we can see from one of the first new things announced for Just Cause 3. Now players can deploy multiple grapple tethers, enabling Rico to chain together incredible moments of chaos and destruction. Oh, and now you can manually retract the tethers so you can slam things into each other or launch unhappy soldiers into space. This is what happens when devs start thinking like modders. Because all the wasteland survival you'd been doing up until this point was survival light for stupid babies, Fallout New Vegas introduced Hardcore Mode. In Hardcore Mode, stim packs and Radaway right work slowly over time, you'll need to eat and drink regularly to stay alive, and you'll need to sleep regularly or start suffering from sleep deprivation, fall over and die. Also your ammunition now has a weight and your beloved companions can permanently die. Sounds fun, right? Super fun! Anyway, Hardcore Mode was inspired by a couple of survival-themed mods for Fallout 3, most notably the Fallout 3 Wanderers Edition mod. If anything, this is even more punishingly extreme than Hardcore Mode, as it includes tougher enemies, no fast travel, and much, much deadlier radiation. We are massive wusses, so we haven't been near Hardcore Mode or Wanderers Edition. But hey, it's good to know there are people out there who can keep humanity going in the potential post-apocalypse after people like us die immediately on the first day after stepping on a rusty nail. Counter-Strike is one of the most famous and successful examples of a mod finding a life of its own. It started out in 1999 as a mod for the original Half-Life. The mod made it so instead of playing a mute scientist who can't even put a zen crystal in the beam of an anti-mass spectrometer without causing a resonance cascade, you play as teams of terrorists and counter-terrorists who battle to stop each other terrorising or counter-terrorising. Valve, in their Valve-ly way, noticed that the mod was really, really good and hired its creators, putting out a standalone version of Counter-Strike in the year 2000. The series now includes four main games and several spin-off titles, including a zombie spin-off, which is universally recognised as the sign that your franchise has made it. We were never going to see the weirdest of Grand Theft Auto's mods officially included in a Grand Theft Auto game. Right, thank you. But that doesn't mean developer Rockstar isn't paying attention. 
For as long as there have been 3D Grand Theft Auto games, there have been enterprising fans modding in first-person view modes so you can really get inside the head of someone who spends the majority of their time shooting people, ramping cars and jumping out of helicopters. And finally, with the arrival of Grand Theft Auto V on PC and new-gen consoles, we have an officially sanctioned first-person view in our Grand Theft Auto. This is a perspective that lets you see the interior of cars and get drunk in first person, and it makes jumping off buildings way more harrowing than before. So now we've got an official first person view in our Grand Theft Auto. How about those playable horses, yeah Rockstar, please? This is not happening. This is not happening. Aren't they supposed to be saving our asses? Looks like there's been a change of plans. One way to get fan-made content into your game is just to be Valve and then wave your magical Valve wand over the mod and turn it into DLC. That's how development works, right? No! Well, that's exactly what happened with Left 4 Dead 2's Coldstream DLC. Modder Matthew Lauderlay had created an impressive four-stage campaign with a final stage that is one long gauntlet run through a never-ending horde. Valve gave it the official stamp of approval, although it's technically non-canon if that sort of thing keeps you awake at night. And they released it as an official update on PC and as DLC on the Xbox Live Marketplace. Best of all, Lourdelay is now a professional. He contributed to Dishonored and is now working on Sky Saga Infinite Isles as a level designer on a procedurally generated sandbox MMO. Which sounds a bit like being a chauffeur for a self-driving car, but hey, if he's happy, we're happy. Battlefield 1942 was a popular game. Very nearly as popular was the Desert Combat mod for Battlefield 1942. It was huge. So while Battlefield developer DICE was toiling away on the disappointing sequel, Battlefield Vietnam, large numbers of Battlefield players were merrily swooping around in Gulf War era jets and firing guns that didn't require a bachelor's degree in history to operate. Now we're not saying that Battlefield 2 took its modern combat setting from the success of Desert Combat, but that's exactly what we're saying. DICE even hired the mod creators, Trauma Studios, to help on the game, shutting the studio again two weeks before the Battlefield 2 release date, which seems unnecessarily mean. Trauma Studios then went on to become Chaos Studios and made Frontline's Fuel of War and Homefront. Bear in mind that Battlefield 2 release date was two whole years before Call of Duty made the switch to modern warfare. Once again, we're not saying that Desert Combat is responsible for every modern combat game since 2005, but the words just keep coming out. So those were seven genius game ideas borrowed from the fans. Thanks to commenter Leon Ishinomori for the inspiration for this video, and drop us a like and subscribe for more from Outside Xbox. Ooh, I think that Outside Xbox motto I was installing is finally finished. Oh yeah!